It's the first science fiction movie ever made, yet it didn't come from the studios of Hollywood because they didn't exist at the time. Instead, this movie came from France. Released all the way back in 1902, the film, which only runs for 14 minutes, depicts space travel before there was even powered flight. Yes, we're talking about a trip to the moon, and this is Sign 5. Le Voyage de la Luna otherwise known as A Trip to the Moon, was the brainchild of pioneer filmmaker Georges Méliès, who was inspired by Jules Verne's 19th century novels From the Earth to the Moon and Around the Moon. As fortune would have it, Méliès had already produced a previous moon-focused short film called The Astronomer's Dream in 1898. Of particular significance is the film was made at a time when the film industry as we know it didn't exist and where most of the limited number of films that were created were experimental, very short, and only covered basic aspects of real life, which in itself was still considered a novelty. The film story follows Professor Barbon Foyer, who, as the president of the Astronomy Club, proposes a flight to the moon. Despite some reticence by one of the other members, an expedition is put together where six members of the club launch a capsule into space. Upon landing on the moon, they encounter the lunar inhabitants called the Selenites, and pandemonium breaks out. As has been well documented, Méliès built his own film studio which was primarily made of glass to utilise natural sunlight for filming. Moreover, in what was a classic example of running before you can crawl, a trip to the moon was made before the invention of the aeroplane, so it's conceivable some audiences found the film preposterous because powered flight wasn't even possible at the time, let alone the farcity of space travel. Whilst by contrast, budding movie moguls and entrepreneurs realised just how emotive and profitable film could become. As such, the trip to the moon became influential in encouraging the creation of American film production a few years later. Despite the primitive production technology available at the time, the film was especially unique due to its special effects, which were all created by Méliès himself. Fortunately, Méliès had previously created numerous short reels and test footage focusing specifically on trick photography, as it was then known. With that in mind, Trip to the Moon wasn't just the world's first science fiction movie, but it was also the first cinematic film to utilise special visual effects, which in itself marked the birth of a whole new industry, even though no one knew it at the time. Yet what is most significant of all, and why A Trip to the Moon remains unique, is that in the history of film production is one of the first films, if not the first, to use this new filmmaking medium as a form of entertainment, whilst featuring a narrative-driven story. In addition, Melies intentionally shot the film with little to no camera movement so as to emulate a person sitting in a theatre watching a stage production. For this reason, the film was directly inspired by 19th century Parisian theatrical design and style. The enormity of the film's scale was highlighted in the then unheard of three month production time. With 30 scenes to be filmed and with studio lights yet to be invented, everything had to be shot on sunny days within a four hour time frame. One of the key facets of the film is the introduction of the lunar inhabitants called the Selenites. In what could be looked upon as a fable of humanity, the first meeting between the terrestrial explorers and the Selenites doesn't end well. Consequently, the film's climax is a sad indictment of humanity's willingness to exploit other species for personal pleasure. It's for this reason the film is considered by some scholars to be anti-imperialistic in nature. Despite being made over 120 years ago, it's hard to imagine but the film was actually produced in colour. So how is this possible? As it turns out, the film was hand-painted frame by frame directly onto the film stock by over 200 women working for a colorization studio in Paris. Although the film features an ensemble cast, the main protagonist, Professor Barbo Foyer, is portrayed by Georges Méliès himself. As Méliès noted with irony later on, he was actually the star of the film even though the term star hadn't actually been coined yet. So who should see the film? A Trip to the Moon is a movie anyone can enjoy. However, the film is very flamboyant and quaint in nature, and for this reason isn't likely to appeal to a majority of people. Furthermore, aside from having no beginning or end credits, the film also doesn't have any intertitles, which was a common communication method used in silent films, as they hadn't been conceived yet. For its original cinema screenings, an interpreter would narrate the film for the audience. Consequently, if the film is viewed today without a pre-recorded narration, then it will be difficult to comprehend the actions of the characters. So if you haven't seen the film before, then be prepared for something that is both historically fascinating and also a little jarring to the senses at the same time. Remembering that filmmaking itself was in its absolute infancy at this point. But putting that aside, if you want to see the birth of science fiction cinema, then for that reason alone, it's well worth watching. <laughs>